Hey guys, it's your buddy Mog Swamp. Today I wanted to talk about a technique that I've been implementing recently into my survival world. And don't get me wrong, it's nothing super original or unique. It's just sort of a new mindset, a uh, way of thinking about things that I've been using and it's been providing me with a lot of inspiration, a lot of motivation to uh, keep going on this world here. And uh, what I'm referring to is sort of this practice of hiding farms within buildings. This is sort of in contrast to what, what a lot of people do, which is having like an industrial district far away from their main base, where a lot of their farms go because they might be laggy um, and they just look ugly. So they kind of shove them all in one spot. And I've been sort of challenging myself in my survival world to not have an industrial district and instead to incorporate all the farms into the world itself. So two great examples are this bee farm and this moss farm here. The, especially the moss farm is just so much more fun to use. We can come around to the side door here. This is how you turn it on. And then all the different working parts of the machine are sort of visible it just really all the movement makes the build feel so alive and yeah it's just a really cool excuse to have a building and that's the thing is I love building in this game but if you build something that doesn't really have a purpose if there's no farms or no functionality to it sadly you just don't end up going and visiting that area very much so a great example is uh, the tavern down there I love this inn so much but it doesn't have any actual functional use in the game and so I rarely actually go over there in my day-to-day -day survival gameplay but with the honey farm and the moss farm these are farms that I use literally on a daily basis and so it's really fun to have to go and interact with these buildings in my world. And what's really cool to me is the idea that I'm killing two birds with one stone because sometimes it's really hard to come up with ideas for buildings when you're trying to build up a city in this game. When you have a blank canvas in front of you with uh, no ideas, it can be really hard to just decide what to do. But when you have a farm that you're trying to cover up, it sort of sets restraints uh, to the building and uh, all of a sudden the building starts to come together. So if you've ever watched any tutorial on how to build in Minecraft, most of the modern ones uh, tell you to basically start with boxes. So they'll say, you know, build a shape that you want to be your main building, but then you're gonna wanna add like, you know, a little shoot off here and uh, maybe another shape here and that just helps make the building interesting. When you're trying to cover up a farm, this just kind of naturally happens. So I just loaded a backup of my world uh, before I built up the building around the moss farm, and you can sort of see what I'm talking about here. Um, here is where the door to the farm uh, ended up, right around there. And so I knew that it had to stretch out to here, and then I knew it had to come out at least enough to cover up uh, this part here. So, you know, we had to have a wall here and then it sticks out a little here. So we needed, you know, another wall to come out a little bit here. And so once you just outline the farm, because farms come in all different shapes and sizes, all of a sudden it, it's, you start to get an idea. Like we could have a little offshoot here. We could have a little offshoot here. And then this part's kind of square. So maybe we go up with that and create a tower. And uh, yeah, you can just sort of see how the restrictions that the farm gives you uh, really helps out with creativity. And here's another example here. This is actually a, a creative copy of my world where I was messing around with trying to cover up this tree farm here. And you can see this is an enormous farm. I mean, we've got this giant part uh, over here where you stand and plant the trees. And then there's this huge blast chamber around the back. And so in order to cover all this up, you need a really big building. And so actually what I did with this one is I sort of, drew on paper the general shape of the farm and then started sketching out uh, some rough boxes and, and use that as a guide to actually work on the build in creative mode. All right, guys, so all of this that you're seeing on the screen here was actually done in survival mode in the game. Uh, and I just was hitting a brick wall. Like I just could not figure out how to make this work. You had this awkward little ledge here. Uh, it needed to come out to here. I wanted to make it like a lumber mill theme. So I wanted like saw blades and things like that, but I just couldn't 
see how it was all gonna come together. And so I started by just drawing, you know, a basic geometric outline of sort of what I had to work with. And from there, I was able to refine it and eventually, you know, came up with uh, all the little workings. So, you know, I'll take little notes, uh, a giant gear on top to control this crane. And I wanted to have a tower here because the farm sticks up a little higher there. So that would cover that up. And then this nice uh, big uh, sloped roof to, to cover up. You see how the, the farm sort of sticks up there? Yeah, so uh, a sloped roof seemed like it would be perfect to cover that up. And so using this drawing, then I was able to uh, go back and into creative mode and finish off the design. I also knew that there was gonna end up being a big flat wall on this end based on my drawing. And so I uh, sort of drew out a way to design this wall. And then even from the back of the design, we had this weird little part that just sticks out further than the rest of the back of the building. And so that gave me an idea to just sort of have like a nice sloped roof kind of jutting out here. And here's the finished design, guys, and not to toot my own horn too much, but I really think this is, you know, one of my most successful designs. And it's actually pretty true to my drawing for the most part. I ended up adding a chimney here that wasn't in the drawing. Um, I didn't end up adding a gable onto the roof. Um, but yeah, for the most part, this is pretty accurate to what I drew. And just uh, ignore this little wall that I kept open here. Um, I may want to feed different kinds of blocks into this blast chamber. So I kept it open for the time being. And another point I wanna make is just how much this adds to the lore of your world. Since this is a wood farm, I tried to sort of replicate that like old lumber mill aesthetic that you might have seen during the industrial revolution. So, you know, we've got big gears turning and, and all this stuff. And now I have an idea of what I wanna do with the rest of this area. You know, you're gonna need infrastructure to drop off the logs and take them away. And maybe we're gonna need some way to get down to the water uh, so that ships can end up shipping the logs around. Another great example of the lore is this uh, honey farm that I built. Uh, this building really suggests that there's some sort of beekeeper who lives here. Maybe it's their job to take care of the bees and they've got a bedroom up there, they've got a small kitchen, and then you can come down around the back and you can see that they've got beehives back here, a little basement where they're keeping all their supplies for taking care of the bees. And it just, it really gives the building a purpose because if this wasn't a bee farm, I would have had really no idea how to design this building and make it feel, you know, lived in. So guys, I don't wanna ramble on too much in this video. I think you guys are getting the point, but I do just wanna show you, you know, how far you can push this idea. And uh, this is sort of where it all started for me, is the Spider Cathedral. And uh, if you're a fan of this series of my world, you'll know that for years and years, for, for almost 10 years now, I've had a spider farm just sort of floating. It was made out of stone bricks and it was just a box floating in the air. And that's actually it up there. If we get close enough to it, we might see some spiders start to fall. But this is just such a good example of how extreme you can push this technique. You know, covering up this, uh, this spider farm could have been a lot more simple, but I decided to make it a really extreme build and sort of work the farm into the design. So the way the spiders get pushed around is just through some water streams, which kind of make this uh, spidery cross shape that you're seeing on the bottom here. And so that inspired me to sort of make it a religious symbol. And so if you look at the front of the church, that same shape is repeated up there. And it's almost like a religious symbol in this world where they worship spiders. I use that same cross symbol on top of the building as well, and even in other parts of my world. Way on the other side of the city, there's a cemetery, and because cemeteries are sort of spiritual grounds, um, we have that same symbol on top of the morgue. So just to really show you how night and day this is, guys, check out what this farm used to look like. It was literally just a floating box that I would walk up to, <laughs> and then, come down here and the spiders would fall out. And you can see where that cross shape I'm talking about came from. It's just how the farm is shaped on the bottom. 
and in order to collect the drops, I would literally just go down to the bottom and pick them up out of those chests. Super boring, super ugly, no story behind it. By the way, guys, this farm uh, has worked for 10 years. It's a farm that I designed way back in the day. I'll uh, throw the link to that farm up on the screen right now in case you want to check it out for your own world. I will warn you though, your world has to be very lit up for you to get good rates with this farm. But jumping back into present day again, you can see just how much fun it is to come use this farm now. And it just added so much to my world, so much lore. You know, now we know that they worship spiders in this world. And even uh, collecting the drops is pretty fun. We come here behind where the choir would stand and drop down here. And I've got like a whole tunnel designed here with all the drops funneling down nicely. And it's, it's, just, it's just a joy to use. It's one of my favorite parts of my world. It's one of the biggest builds I've ever done. And I never would have had this idea if not for the need to cover up this ugly farm. So guys, I think I've said all about I can say in this video. Hopefully I've convinced you that it's a good idea to try and hide some of your farms in, in buildings to, as a challenge to yourself. Um, but don't get me wrong, there are certain farms that need to be in certain places where it's totally not worth building a building around it. You don't have to do this all the time. If you want to have an industrial district uh, because of lag, I think that's totally fine too. It's just something that I've been doing in my world that has been giving me a ton of inspiration over the past couple years and a lot of motivation to keep pushing forward with this world. So I wanted to share that with you guys, share with you my mindset. Hopefully it helped you guys out in some way. Um, if it did, why don't you throw a like on the video? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Have a good one. Yeah.